a decal will act as a real life projector and projects the texture onto the other surfaces of our mesh in the scene. Now this video is not me showing you how to use the decal feature in Unity. I will rather discuss the functionality behind it by creating our own custom decal projector. I'm using Unity 6 and my project is set up in URP. Now before we dive into it, I want to thank Lowell's for encouraging me to make this video. You're breathtaking. Alright, I have this scene. Now first let me create a cube. Which will be our projector cube. And I don't need this box collider. Then let's create a shader graph. And for now let's go on the shader graph. I'm going to call it projector. And since this is just a demo, I'm not going to create any property that I will be tweaking from the inspector. So instead of creating a material, I'll directly use this default one. Then in the shader graph, open up the graph inspector and in the graph settings, first select the surface type to be transparent. I want transparent cube and uncheck this cast shadow setting. And that should do it for now. Now the first thing I need is the fragment position of these two quads in wall space that I'm going to be looking through this cube. So how do I get it? Well technically I can't because this cube shader doesn't know if anything exists outside this cube. Alright maybe that's a bit of a stretch but let's say on its own this projector shader doesn't know if anything outside this cube exists. Fortunately, I can read the depth value of each fragment within this viewport by accessing the depth buffer or depth texture. So let's create a scene depth node. By default, this node will sample the depth texture from the screen UVs. And for the sampling drop down, select this row. That simply means give me the exact value stored in the depth texture. Then with the scene depth, I can calculate the fragment's position in clip space using the screen UVs. So let's take screen position and then I'm going to make an NDC vector or clip space vector. And then we will simply convert that clip space vector into the wall space vector using this inverse view projection matrix. So let's access transformation matrix node. By the way, matrices are used to transform the vector, basically scale or to translate. Then here we will have the predefined matrices. So just an overview, this modal matrix will convert the vector from local space to world space. Inverse modal will do the opposite of that. So world to local. View will convert the vector from world to view. Inverse view will do view to world. Projection matrix will go view to clip space, inverse projection clip to view space. This view projection will directly go world to clip space and inverse view projection will go clip space to world space. We need that so let's select inverse view projection matrix. Now with these three nodes I can calculate the world space position by hand but I found a nice function that does a heavy lifting for us basically handling the reverse depth of different graphics API. So let's create a custom function node and open up the graph inspector. Then in the graph inspector, let's define inputs for all these three. So I'll go screen UV of type vector two, then depth of type float and finally inverse view projection matrix so ivp matrix of type matrix 4x4 and for the output it will return a position in world space so let's go pause world space and the type will of course be vector 3 then instead of using this file let's go string and let's give a name for our function so calculate world space it will just display the name here and in the body I can write the code so let me open up notepad so we can actually see better and I'll go position full space make sure to type in exact name of this output which somehow got messed up equals 
compute wall space position and then pass in our screen UV, our depth and IVP matrix and that's it just simply copy the code paste it here now we have a nice custom function assign the values here all right now i have fragment position in wall space let's just visualize that and the cube will start to glow because obviously these position can go beyond zero to one range so let's just saturate it so currently through this cube I can visualize the fragment position of these two quads and our skybox and so on. Again, just to clarify, the position we are seeing is not from this cube. It's the actual position of these two quads currently. All right, now let's say I only want to visualize this position if our cube is interacting with any other mesh. So first I have to determine if my cube is intersecting with any other mesh. And I can do that by calculating the fragment position relative to my cube's pivot. In other words, I need to convert this full space position into the local space position. And in shader graph, if you want to convert a vector from one coordinate space to another without touching a matrix, you can do that using transform node. Let's take our world position and the position is in wall space and i want to convert it to the object space or local space and the type is indeed the position basically our input vector is a position vector okay so by doing this at the cube pivot, i will have the value of 000 or origin and in unity our cube is one meter wide in all three axes so let's say for z axis at the pivot I will get 0 and at the cube's edge I will get 0.5 and at the back edge I will get negative 0.5 but I want to calculate the distance to both back and front so we will simply use the absolute of that now to check the intersection I just need to check if the value is less than 0.5 so basically I need white values if the value is less than 0.5 and black otherwise so for that, I can use step node. And in the edge, let me pass in 0 0.5. So here I will get the value of 1 if this input is greater than 0 0.5. Otherwise, I will get 0. But I need opposite of that. So of course, I can run this output through the 1 minus node like that. Or I can simply flip this to inputs. Like this. Then simply I will multiply the x, y and z components together. So let's split the output. And then go r multiply g or x into y. And then can multiply it with our z values. So here I've calculated a mask. Let's just visualize that. So now if my cube is not intersecting with anything, I will get black values. And if it intersects, I will get the white values. Just like that. Then I can simply multiply my mask with my output to again visualize the wall position of the fragments and then I will take this mask output and feed it into alpha as well because I don't need this black values anymore so now our cube is acting as a projector or a decal by the way will this count as a volumetric effect because currently our effect only exists within the specified volume let me know in the comments all right now instead of visualizing the fragment position i need to sample a texture here and to do that first we need uvs obviously i can't use the default uvs of my cube so i need to calculate them so for that i can simply take this local position output and let's say i want to project the texture 
from the y-axis so onto the xz plane so I will use this swizzle node and just use xz components and let's just visualize that we don't need the saturate anymore so if we look at the cube from the bow I will get origin zero in the middle and here it will go from minus 0 0.5 0 0.5 to positive 0 0.5 0 0.5 and I know this looks kind of weird but that's just because I'm using the ACES post processing now let's say instead of origin 00, 0 I want my UVs to go from 00, 0 to 1 1 I can simply add 0 0.5 0 0.5 in both X and Y components to do that so simply go add 0.5.5 so now I have origin 00 here and it goes up to 1 1 here and this UVs will be scaled along with the box so it will always be 00, zero here and goes 1 1 here now that's exactly what I want but let's say you don't want to scale the UVs along with the box so for that you need to access the object scale so go object node then here you can access the scale we are using the XZ component so again swizzle it with XZ and multiply these two swizzles together before adding 0.5.5 so like this so now if I scale my cube the UVs will stay 0, 0 to 1, 1 here. So currently, UVs X is going beyond 0 to 1 range. Obviously, I don't want that. So I'll just delete that and use the swizzle again. And let's set the Q value 1, 1, 1 back. All right, now that I have UVs, it's time to sample the texture. And for that, I'm going to use sample texture 2D node. And for the texture, I'm going to select it from here. Let's use this one. Then for the UVs, use our calculated UVs, take this RGB output and feed it into this multiply node. Now my texture currently doesn't have an alpha, so it won't matter, but you can use this swizzle and use the alpha channel like this. And there we have a nice texture working as a projector. Pretty cool. But you know what? I don't like this white background. So let me try to cut it. And so for the texture, I don't have much whites in the actual foreground. Okay, so this is just the top of my head. Okay, so... All right, let me just add RGB values together. So, add and another add. So, all this channel could go from 0 to 1. So, this final output could go from 0 up to 3, where 3 is the white values. So, I can cut that using smooth step maybe so let's say values greater than 2.9 I need black values and for values less than 2.8 I need white values and then simply multiply it with the alpha and then use it okay that needs a little bit tweaking but I'll mostly cut out the background. So you can see that shaders are pretty versatile. If you're comfortable with playing around with the numbers, it can get a lot of things done. Now you might be thinking that what's the point of all this? We already have a decal feature in Unity. Yes, you're absolutely right. But let's say this is just a theoretical video. A practical theory video maybe. <laughs> Hopefully you've learned something new though. That's it from me and I'll see you in the next one. 
maybe.